Vietnam is a country located on the easternmost side of Indochinese Peninsula in Southeast Asia. It is known for its long beaches, vibrant city life, and Buddhist sculptures and architecture. And as mentioned in today's video, we will be discussing about the traditional visual arts of Vietnam. During the country's primitive stages, when Vietnamese ancestors gave up their wild living experience to have a settled life in community, they started inventing tools for their households. Pottery artifacts made from clay were found dating back as old as the middle of the Stone Age at Baxan, where ceramic making first appeared as rudimentary jars for containing water or pots for cooking, lacking any artistic design. Stone making techniques eventually developed, reaching a high level of sophistication and ceramic products during the Neolithic era, which began to take on an artistic character. Specifically, Hoa Lok ceramic products are endowed with rich designs exhibiting original geometric thinking. The Dongson Culture Feudal communities of rice growers began to develop in the Red River Delta, which is a fertile region up in the north. They eventually confederated, forming the Kingdom of Van Lang, which corresponds with the Bronze Age, the Dongton culture. While in the south, the Sahuin culture of seafarers also flourished that has strong ties to the western Philippine archipelago and after the amalgamation of the various tribes formed the Kingdom of Champa. Back in the north, the Kingdom of Van Lang united with the various U tribes of the area to form the Olak and then finally annexed by Nan Yu or Nam Viet, which is a southern Chinese kingdom, and later incorporated into the Han Empire, thus starting the Chinese domination of the Vietnam. As mentioned earlier, the Dongson culture is one of the bronze cultures of Indochina. They are best known for the Dongson drums, which are distinctive giant ceremonial bronze drums lavishly decorated with ritual scenes and depictions of warriors. Materially, the Dongson people split their food economies between fishing, hunting, and farming. Their material culture included agricultural tools such as socketed and boot-shaped axes, spades and hoes, hunting tools such as tanged and plain arrowheads, fishing tools such as grooved net sinkers and socketed spearheads, and weapons such as daggers. Dongson houses, on the other hand, were set on stilts with thatched leaves. Grave deposits include a few bronze weapons, drums, bells, spittons, citulae, and daggers. A handful of larger communities such as Koloa contained fortifications, and there is some evidence for social differentiation or ranking among the house sizes and if the artifacts buried with individuals. And of course, both burials is an important part of the Dongson culture as in relation of their sea-going society. During burial, the bodies wrapped carefully in several layers of a shroud rami textile and was placed in the Kano segment with the head at the open end and feet in the intact stern or bow. A Dongson cord marked pot is placed next to the head and a small flanked cup made of red lacquered food called a beggar's cup was found inside the pot. The Cham Art This is derived from Champa, the ancient Indo-Chinese kingdom lasting from the 2nd to the 17th century AD and extending over the central and southern coastal region of Vietnam. Established by the Cham, a people of Malayo-Polynesian stock and Indianized culture, Champa was finally absorbed by the Vietnamese who in turn were strongly influenced by Cham culture. This is divided into two epochs, the Northern Capital Art and the Southern Capital Art. From the Northern Capital Art, they have the Misen Temple or Sanctuary located at Quang Nam Province, Central Vietnam. 
This is one of the best examples of ancient Hindu architecture, a site where ancient Hindu temples and burial site for kings are located. These temples in Misen follow a common pattern with minor variation. It is a simple one different from the elaborate architecture evolved by the Khmer. Its structural features are central porticos, the colonnaded porch or entrance to a structure, or covered walkway surrounded by regularly spaced columns. Another one is the pilasters, the columns projecting third of their width or less from the walls. This is where particles were set, crowned with horizontal molded capitals that step out upward. This gives strong vertical accent to the body of the shrine. The arches. These are based on an Indian pattern and are carved with a design of slowly undulating foliage springing from the mouth of the monster whose head forms the apex of the arc. The pedestal altars. These are common internal feature for all of these temples upon which statues were set, sometimes it seems in groups. The pedestal itself are adorned with beautiful reliefs. Cham sculptures. These appear to be based on Indian imagery of the celestial court that is mostly seen in the temples. Another structure found in the northern capital of Cham art is Dongduo or ruined Buddhist monastery complex. This is a greater emphasis upon the plasticity of architectural elements such as angled pilasters and porticos. The circuit wall was estimated one kilometer long that once hold Buddhist shrines for their deities. It is said possible that when this complex of three courts, halls, and gate pavilions was intact, it may have resembled very closely to the contemporary Buddhist monasteries of northeastern India. Going down, the southern capital art holds the shrines at Vijaya Bindi. These were built when the Cham capital was forced to be established at Bindi because the northern provinces were taken over by the Vietnamese. Silver towers, for example, in the early 12th century, are simplified versions of the older northern towers. The corner pavilions were added to the roofing stories and arches of pointed horseshoe shape. The building of successive shrines gradually declined. The plasticity of the old pilasters and architraves became simpler and the beauty of the buildings became largely a matter of proportion. By the mid-14th century, the temples erected at Bin Din articulated in the reminiscences of the classic Chan style. The sculptures in the southern capital art conveys a sense of tranquility and splendor, but an indigenous style of cubicle emphasis came progressively to dominate the iconic Hindu figures at southern sites. The eminence of Cham art is the sculpture. Figures that formed part of an architectural decor, heads of monsters, for example, which decorated the corners of architraves, and figures of lions which sported bases and flints. These figures reflect the heavy ornateness of the Cham decorative style as its most aggressive, and many of them are florous into the solid, worm-like ornament that is the Cham version of Hindu Khmer foliage carving and carry strong reminiscences of Dong Son work. A big part of Vietnamese art are ceramic figures. Vietnamese art and ceramics during 10th to 15th centuries have been largely influenced by both ancient native styles and Song Dynasty's art including applying the three colors concept to its ceramics. Chinese-influenced philosophies adopted by the Vietnamese such as Confucianism, Mahayana Buddhism, and Taoism all had a lasting impression on Vietnamese art. Some also claim there are small traces of Cham influences to be found as well. One of its examples is the glazed ceramic figures. These are figures used on many types of Chinese temples. Architectural planning, on the other hand, is considered as the great achievement of Vietnamese art during 15th to 18th centuries. 
It is incorporating with Confucian, Taoist, and Buddhist temples in the landscape environment, and also includes halls for rituals and South Chinese vein images. Its features are incorporation of elaborate carved and colored woodwork in a style based upon the coiling dragon and cloud decoration of Ming and Qing China but with the characteristically Vietnamese emphasis on weight and curve. It also features some stone bases, columns, stairways, and bridges. Other notable traditional art forms from Vietnam are their tombs, which are Chinese type and contains bronze furnishings where Dongsu style is visible. Old paintings on rock are found at Tuyen Quang that shows Buddha, Bodhisattvas, and donors. Van Yu in Hanoi contains ritual bronzes in Chinese style. And the wooden stupa are wooden panels carved in an ornate 14th century Chinese style where some parts of it bears a representation of the Buddhist paradise Amitabha. Finally, the Lei Dynasty is viewed as the golden age of Vietnamese art and its ceramics became famous across East and Southeast Asia. One of its greatest architectural structures are the Temple of Literature, one Pilar Pagoda and Quine Lam Pagoda. Vietnamese art forms are rich in culture and history which are preserved very well by their community and are still well known and appreciated until today. It is the amalgamation of the different cultural influences of their neighbors as well as the centuries of highs and lows. We hope you enjoyed and appreciate the Vietnamese art too. Thank you for watching.